In our tour of the main pathways of energy metabolism, we have looked at glycogen synthesis and breakdown. In this video, we'll consider how glucose is metabolized in glycolysis to pyruvate and in fermentation to lactate or ethanol. For the most part, we're not going to go through the individual steps of these processes, and you are not responsible for knowing the individual steps for the test. If you're curious, you can find the steps of glycolysis and fermentation in a textbook or in countless places on the internet. What we do expect you to know on the test are the starting materials and end products of these processes, and under what circumstances the pathways are upregulated or downregulated. The overall reaction carried out in the 10 steps of glycolysis is shown here. Glucose, a 6-carbon monosaccharide, is broken down into two 3-carbon molecules called pyruvate. During this process, there's a net production of two ATP molecules from two ADPs and two inorganic phosphates. Conversion of glucose to pyruvate is oxidative, meaning that electrons are taken from the carbons. These electrons are transferred to NAD plus to make two NADH molecules. What happens to these product molecules? Well, the two pyruvates can be oxidized further in the mitochondrion in processes that will allow synthesis of ATP. I'll talk about that in a future video. The two ATP molecules are useful as sources of chemical energy, as I previously described. And the two NADH molecules donate their electrons to molecules in the electron transport chain in a process that ultimately results in production of more ATP. We'll go over that process in a future video as well. A key point here, though, is that glycolysis results in production of ATP and compounds that can be used to make ATP. One thing to note is that other monosaccharides, such as galactose or fructose, can be converted to intermediates in glycolysis. So we can get these products of pyruvate, ATP, and NADH from other monosaccharides, not just from glucose. So how is flux through glycolysis regulated? To answer that, we should look to the energetics of the pathway. The Gibbs free energy values of the metabolites in each step of glycolysis are plotted on this graph. You may recognize this graph from a video I made about regulation of metabolic pathways when I introduced the graph, but I didn't say where it came from. I hope you remember from that video that the irreversible reactions, the reactions with large negative delta G values, are the targets of regulation of any metabolic pathway. In glycolysis, those reactions are the first, the third, and the tenth reactions. These reactions are shown on the right side of the screen here and are catalyzed by the three enzymes shown. To illustrate the regulation of glycolysis, I want to focus on the enzyme catalyzing the third reaction, phosphofructokinase. This enzyme is allosterically inhibited by ATP and allosterically activated by ADP, AMP, and inorganic phosphate. The cellular concentrations of these compounds reflect how much available energy the cell has. When ATP concentration is high, then the cell has a lot of energy and there's not much need to do glycolysis, which is mainly about making more ATP. When ADP, AMP, and phosphate concentrations are high, then the cell is low on energy and glycolysis is favored as a way to make more ATP. Another regulator of phosphofructokinase is citrate, which allosterically inhibits the enzyme. Citrate is a metabolite in the citric acid cycle, which is another pathway used ultimately to make ATP. When the concentration of citrate increases, it means that movement of molecules through the citric acid cycle is slow, implying that demand for ATP is low. Therefore, the cell slows down glycolysis, which is used mainly to make ATP. And finally, fructose 2,6-bisphosphate activates phosphofructokinase. Now, this compound is not an intermediate in glycolysis, but its concentration does increase in response to the presence of the hormone insulin in the bloodstream, which, as you remember, is a signal that blood glucose concentration is high. So, this allosteric regulation of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate is a way for insulin in the blood to affect energy metabolism in the cell by increasing flux through glycolysis in response to high blood glucose. 
Hexokinase and pyruvate kinase are regulated according to similar logic. When glucose is abundant or ATP is needed, the pathway is activated, but when ATP is not needed, the pathway is inhibited. Now, for glycolysis to continue, you need a supply of the starting materials. In particular, you need a way to regenerate NAD plus from NADH. If oxygen is present, this is not a problem. Our cells have electron transport pathways that remove electrons from NADH and transfer them to other molecules with molecular oxygen being the ultimate electron acceptor. During this process, NADH is converted back to its oxidized NAD plus form and is ready to pick up more electrons in glycolysis. But if oxygen is not present in the system, our cells have nothing to transfer the electrons to, and eventually all the NAD plus in the cell would be converted to NADH. There would be no NAD plus left for glycolysis to continue, meaning the cell would not be able to use glucose to make ATP. Certain cell types, such as skeletal muscle cells and some microorganisms, have developed mechanisms to regenerate NAD plus, even in so-called anaerobic conditions, when no molecular oxygen is present. A pathway that uses a starting material to make ATP without net oxidation is called a fermentation. In one type of fermentation, which is used in muscle cells, glucose is converted to pyruvate, and then the pyruvate is reduced to lactate. The electrons from this reduction come from NADH produced earlier in the process. So the net amount of NAD plus in the cell does not change, nor does the number of electrons on the six carbons that originally came from the glucose. But ATP has been produced. A second strategy used by some microorganisms is to convert glucose to pyruvate and then convert the pyruvate to carbon dioxide and acetaldehyde. The acetaldehyde is reduced to ethanol, consuming NADH made earlier in the process. Again, ATP is produced without changing the net oxidation state on carbon. The two fermentation pathways are summarized on this slide. Now note that fermentation refers to the entire process of, convert of converting glucose to lactate or glucose to ethanol and carbon dioxide, not just the final steps in these processes. Fermentations produce ATP without net oxidation of the starting materials and are a way to make ATP under anaerobic conditions when molecular oxygen is not present. In the next video, I'll describe how cells make glucose in the process of gluconeogenesis.